The last property we're going to look at is about solubility. And when we look at solubility in water versus oil, what we're really looking at is what is similar. So you may have heard the expression of like dissolves like, and what that is about is polarity. So when we look at water, what we know is that that is a polar substance. And when we look at oil, we know that it is nonpolar. Because when I look at an oil, it is primarily a chain of hydrogens and carbons, so it's a nonpolar molecule. So if you've ever been to the gas station after a rainstorm when there are puddles on the ground, you'll see kind of a shimmering look on the top of the oil where there's some um, oil or gas that's kind of floating on that water, and they're not mixing with each other because they have different polarities. You also see this if you ever do oil and vinegar as a dressing. Uh, put those together, they actually don't mix with one another because vinegar is water-based, it's aqueous, and that oil is non-polar, so we have a polar versus a non-polar, and we don't see them mixing. If we shake them up, we can temporarily kind of get them where they're, they appear to be mixed, but they're not actually combining with one another. We're just dispersing them in a different way. So when we look at solubility, what we're again looking at is polarity of a molecule. So if I look at my first compound here, my CH3OH, this is actually methanol, I see this OH group present, which tells me I have hydrogen bonding, which means this is a polar molecule, and so we know this is polar, and so therefore this is going to be more soluble in water than in oil, because like dissolves like. So like dissolves like. The next one is C6H6, and this has only got carbons and hydrogens, and that's a clue that this is going to be nonpolar, and so a nonpolar substance is going to be more soluble in oil than in water. KCl is actually an ionic compound. Its predominant force will be ionic forces. But ionic compounds act more like polar compounds than they do like nonpolar compounds, so we treat this as like a polar compound, and it's going to be more soluble in water. So when we're dealing with ionic substances, we're going to see that they behave like polar compounds, whereas molecular compounds, we have to evaluate the overall intermolecular forces. If they have the oxygen or nitrogen, it's going to change the polarity of the molecule. The last one here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So we have C6H14, but notice we have only carbons and hydrogens. We don't have anything really that's going to add polarity to the molecule. And this will actually be nonpolar and therefore is more soluble in oil. So it's just a question of is it polar or nonpolar. The only thing that's a little bit different is we have to worry about the ionic forces. In that case, we're dealing with it acting like it's polar and will be more soluble in water. So is this compound polar or nonpolar? It will be polar. Notice where oxygen and sulfur are on the periodic table. That sulfur is acting very similar to how high to oxygen would in this case, and so our molecule will be polar. The next question is, is what types of intermolecular forces will be present in this molecule? So we will have dispersion forces, because everybody has dispersion forces, and we will have dipole, dipole forces. We will not have hydrogen bonding because our hydrogen here does not meet the definition. It must be directly attached to a fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. Although there are similarities in the behavior of oxygen and sulfur, this is one thing where they are not similar. And the last question is, are they more soluble in oil or water? So it would be more soluble in water because it has dipole-dipole forces. So it's a polar molecule. So first question, polar or nonpolar? Generally, the presence of that oxygen indicates that we are dealing with a polar molecule because there's something to add that polarity. So usually, when you see an oxygen in a molecule, you can your first assumption is that it is going to be polar. Next question, what types of intermolecular forces do we have present? So again, we have our dispersion forces. 
because we have a molecule which always has dispersion and we said it's polar so we will also have our dipole dipole forces we will not have hydrogen bonding because although we have hydrogens that are attached to our carbons here none of them are attached directly to an oxygen so even though there's an oxygen in the molecule there are no hydrogens attached to those oxygens so we can't have any hydrogen bonding last question is is this going to be more soluble in oil or water so it's going to be more soluble in water because it's a polar compound Here we have a hydrocarbon, so that means it just contains carbons and hydrogens, and we have C5H12. And when we look at this, the first thing we want to ask is, is it polar or nonpolar? So this molecule is nonpolar because the carbon-hydrogen bonds are right on that edge of that polar-nonpolar. We generally classify them as nonpolar. But even so, that it's very symmetrical, and so even if there was polarity, it would all cancel out. So this is a nonpolar molecule. What types of intermolecular forces do we see in this molecule? Because it's nonpolar, we are only going to see dispersion forces. Okay, nothing else. And will it be more soluble in oil or water? Because it's nonpolar, it's going to be more soluble in oil rather than water.